We've come all this way, and now we're in the last four verses. We're going to finish the book of 1 Thessalonians. Let's see what they say. We're looking at verses 25 through 28. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Paul closes this epistle with a call to community. Pray for each other, he says. Pray for us. Pray for the church leaders. Pray for each other. And that's certainly something we all should be doing every day. So it says, greet each other with some form of physical contact. Now this one in this culture was a holy kiss. And what they would do is come up and they would kiss one kiss on the cheek if you're the same sex. So a, a woman would kiss a woman on the cheek when they greeted. A man would kiss a man on the cheek. And uh, this wasn't a, a sexual kiss. This was a greeting. But in our culture, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, uh, we have had the handshake, at least up until last year. So the handshake is a form of greeting, a form of physical contact that we can touch each other. I, I have come very convinced. I know that we're made as social beings, social creatures, and I believe that it's God's purpose for us to have some form of physical touch. And so we'll have to sort that out these days about what to do with that. But I don't think that, uh, I, I think we need it. I think we need some physical touch for thriving. The interesting piece here, I find, is where it says, read this epistle to all the holy brethren. Well, now, wait a minute. You might say, the what brethren? The holy brethren is what he said. That is what he said. You were right. You heard it right. Who are the holy brethren? We have this idea, you know, that, that there's these saints. And, you know, this comes out of uh, Roman Catholicism. And the thinking is that there are different holy men, holy people down through the ages, and some of them were super holy. And so they had their own merit. You, you can be, you generate your own merit. You're saved by your own works. Uh, it, that's what the current catechism of the Catholic Church says. And so this opens the door to think of people who have more merit, excess merit. So then there comes Saint so-and-so, Saint, Saint this, Saint that, people who they've declared to have an excess of merit. So the extra merits that Saint so-and-so has go into the treasury of merits. And then when you pray to Saint so-and-so, you can get from him. This is the Catholic theory. This isn't what the Bible teaches. This is exactly not what the Bible teaches. But supposedly then you would receive merits from Saint so-and-so. And of course, this removes uh, some people and it puts them in a separate category, a separate space, where these people are holy and you and I, we're just garden variety people. Biblically, biblically, holy, holy brethren would be every saint, every believer in Jesus is a holy brother, and everyone is a saint who has given himself. Saint just means holy. It comes from the word sanctification and saint. Those are the similar words in English. And so God wants all of his people to be holy. And so when it talks about read this epistle to the holy brethren, when people would come with an epistle from Paul, what they would do, they would all gather around at, at church, and they would read the epistle, and they would all listen closely because it was fascinating and very important, and it was spiritual insight. That's how they did it back then. So I want you to make sure you realize, don't when they say, uh, where's the holy brethren, don't, don't look around and say, well, it must be somebody behind me. You're it. You're it. You're the man or the woman. So we want to be the holy brethren. Read this to all the holy brethren. And then finally, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. He is asking for God's grace for the entire Thessalonian congregation and for you and I who are reading it today. Well, let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this call to holiness yet again. As we conclude the book of 1 Thessalonians, you've called us up uh, to come and draw close to, to you. Bless us, build us, strengthen us, recreate, create in us a clean heart, Lord, and renew a right spirit within us. Thank you for this call to come up higher. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. So who are the holy brethren? You and I. I would invite you, since we've just finished 1 Thessalonians, I hope you'll come back tomorrow morning because we're going to start another book near the end of the Bible. We're going to, uh, not a long book, but an important book. And we're going to go over here to uh, the second epistle of John. We're going to look at second epistle. And our, our series here of presentations will be Deceivers and Antichrists. And we're going to start at verse 1 tomorrow morning. Come and be with me tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.